All right, today we're going to cover a very important topic. Um, and we're going to start off today. We probably will have more words to say about it next week. Um, but the topic is inheritance. And maybe you've seen inheritance before in other languages, maybe you haven't. But what I'm going to do is go over what it means, how it works in program, and when you use it, most importantly. And along with some of the terminology used with inheritance. Inheritance is used when you have a specialized type of something. All right. For example, if I had a class that was for PET, a special type of PET is dog. special type of, of uh, pet is cat, and so on down the line. You can tell something is suitable for inheritance if it passes what's called the ISA test. If I can say a dog is a pet, that's true. So, the dog class can inherit from the pet class. Likewise, cat is a pet. I could say something like a electric car is a car. So, I could inherit a class. I could have a class for a car and inherit electric car. Now, if I said tires, could I inherit tires from car? No, because the is a test would not pass. Tires are not a car, right? The car contains tires or has tires, but a tire is not a car. Therefore, that would not pass the is a test, and therefore you would not inherit, right? And as far as terminology goes, this is uh, called the super class or sometimes shoot, sometimes called the parent class. And this is called the subclass or the child class. All right. So let's think of some other examples. Student and international student. Would there be a inheritance rep, uh, relationship there? Yes, because an international student is a student. That's how you can tell which direction it goes to. It doesn't make sense to say a student is an international student. Well, not all students are international students. But an international student is definitely a student. If we had faculty, we could say adjunct faculty. Well, would adjunct faculty be a subclass of faculty? Yes, because it passes the is a test. All right, an adjunct faculty is a faculty, is a member of faculty, or is a faculty person. So that would pass the is a test. Um, now, if you said, uh, if you said Dean, for example, a uh, Dean is not a faculty person. All right, and faculty people aren't deans. Therefore, there would not be inheritance in that case. So that's the way that you tell if something inherits from something else. Sometimes inheritance is called specialization. Because in all these examples, what we have is a more specialized version of the superclass. A dog is more specific than just a pet. Now we could continue this and have a chihuahua, for example. If we had a chihuahua class, it, would, it could inherit from dog because a dog 
or I'm sorry, a Chihuahua is a dog. A Chihuahua is just a more specialized version of dog. All right. So let's start with a new diagram and draw that. We could have inheritance like this. At the top, we could have pet. We could have dog. And then we could have chihuahua. All right? You can have more than one class inherit from a super class. In the example before, we had dog and cat, but we could have dog, cat, bird, and so on. You can inherit down as many levels as you want. You could have your super class up here, and then have a subclass, have a subclass from that, have a subclass from that, as many layers deep as you wanted to. The one thing that you could not do however, is inherit from two parents. So, for example, if I had a flying vehicle, as a super class, and items with wings as a super class, I could not have an airplane inherit from both of them. We'll talk later on about a workaround that we can have if we do have this situation. But there can't be, a class can't have two parents. A subclass cannot have two superclasses from which it inherits. So, what does this mean when we say that a class inherits from another class? Well, it gets everything from the parent class, and we can define the thing specific to the child class, but we don't have to define everything. All right, let me give you an example here with the uh, pet example and dog. Okay. I could define a couple attributes for pet. I could have a birthday attribute. I could have a name attribute. Because every, every pet has a birthday and every pet has a name. Could have a weight attribute. And then I could have, for example, a eat attribute or an eat method that when you call it the pet eats, right? Sleep. All pets eat, all pets sleep. Now, what is something that's unique to a dog that all pets won't have? Well, dogs can fetch. Dogs can bark. So we could declare those methods on the subclass because those are distinct to the subclass. Those are distinct to the child class, which is dog. So in this example, a dog class will have all these attributes and methods from the super class, plus whatever attributes and methods we define on the dog. So dog license number. Well, that's something that a dog has and no other pet has, all right? When you code the subclass, you only have to code what's different in the subclass. So 
I wouldn't have to code that there's a birth date associated with a dog or that there's a name associated with a dog or that there's a weight or that a dog eats or a dog sleeps. I would have to code the attribute dog license number and a dog can fetch and a dog can bark. So when you create a subclass and when you inherit from a superclass, you automatically get everything that's defined in the superclass. But you can add stuff to it and you can actually override stuff. A dog, for example, might have its own special way of eating. that's different than the way other pets eat. So I could create an eat method for the dog. Talked about how the dog eats dog food or whatever. The one thing that you do not inherit is constructors. So constructors are a special case and uh, we have to uh, manage the constructors. And even though there's constructors defined on the pet, we still have to define them on the dog if we want there to be constructors. So let's look at the example that we have here. In our pizza example, we had an order class. We're going to introduce in this example a delivery order. Now, is that a valid inheritance? Yes, because a delivery order. Is. An order. Pass the is a test. In other words, a delivery order is just a specialized version of an order. So that's what we mean when we say it inherits from it. What that means is we don't have to define all the things that exist on an order. We don't have to define a pizza array. All right, or the pizza array list, because that was already defined on the order. We don't have to define the name. Because a regular order has a name, just like a delivery order has a name. But there's a few things that are unique to a delivery order. This, by the way, is the notation. You draw an arrow pointing up from the subclass to the superclass. With a delivery order, you need the person's address. City, state, and zip. And when you calculate the cost of a delivery order, the way that you calculate the cost for a delivery order is going to be different than you calculate it for a regular order. I would assume there's some delivery charge that is, is added on to the order. So there's already a calculate cost order, uh, calculate the order's cost in the order class. We're going to override that in the delivery order class. All right, let's look at the example. Let's bring this up. And we'll bring up the order class. and the delivery order class and compare them. All right. We made a slight change to the delivery order or the, the regular order class. We made these attributes protected. What does that mean protected? It means that
any subclass can also access those variables. If we made those variables private, then the subclasses would not be able to access those variables. But since we've made them protected, the class itself and any of its subclasses can access those attributes. Let's review what's in the order class. There's those attributes for, for name and phone number and the array list of pizzas called pizza. We have a constructor that accepts two arguments. We have a set name and a get name. We have a set phone and a get phone. We have an add pizza method. We have a calculate bake time method. And we have a calculate price method that loops through all of the pizzas in the list and sums up, gets the total of values of that uh, pizza. And, and sums them up and gives a, a total for the whole order. All these methods and fun, all these methods and attributes can be used inside the delivery order class because we define the delivery order class to inherit from the order class. This is the syntax that we use to make the delivery class inherit from the order class. We say the delivery order class extends the order class. So when we declare these attributes, notice we don't have to declare phone number and name because those were defined in the order class. But for a delivery order, we have an address, city, state, and zip. Whereas if it's a pickup order, we don't have those things. If it's just a regular plain order, we don't have an address, city, state, and zip. As I mentioned before, we don't get any constructors, so we create our own constructor delivery order. And that's going to set the argument phone, the argument name, and the address. We'll come back to this in a minute. There'll be set and get methods for the address. Why? Because there are no set and get methods in the superclass. There's something different about the subclass. It has an address, city, state, and zip. So we're going to have those attributes, or we're going to have get and set methods for them. We do not need a get and set for the name and the phone number, however, because those are contained in the superclass. We can still call get name. We can still call get phone number, but we don't have to define that method in the subclass because that is defined in the superclass. Now I have a method here called calculate delivery time. Why do I define it here? Because for regular order, there is no calculate delivery time method. So I want there to be a calculate delivery order, uh, delivery uh, time method, and therefore I put it in in the subclass. Calculate it. So I'm assuming that we can or we can deliver everything within a half hour. All right, this is very crude. We we're not checking the address and seeing where the location is or anything like that. We're just going to assume that it takes an extra 30 minutes. So the delivery time is simply 30 minutes times what the bake time is for this order. Now notice the bake time method is an in the delivery order class, but that's okay because it is in the order class. Likewise, the, the price is different 
for a delivery order. What we're doing here is we're doing what's called overriding the calculate price method. Because the price of a delivery order is calculated differently than the price of a regular order. The price of a delivery order is the sum of all the pizza's individual prices plus a $5 charge for delivery. So that's what super means. Super means call the super classes version of this function. So here we're going to call the order classes version of calculate price. It's going to loop through all the pizzas and add up the, the total. And then we're going to take that total and add $5 to it. And that's the price of the order. Notice we have in the constructor also super. Order has one constructor that accepts a name and a phone number. We have a function that, ex that expects all these because when we create a delivery order, we want to make sure we have all of these pieces of information. So our constructor has for argu argument name, argument phone number, argument address, argument city, state, and zip. When that's called, though, we call the super classes constructor and pass it the name and the phone number. This is called constructor chaining, where you use the subclasses or the superclasses constructor as part of the subclasses constructor. It's a very, very, very common thing. Because usually, remember that a subclass has everything in the main class or the superclass plus some extra things. So we might add those extra things to the constructor and call the superclass for the things that are contained in the superclass. Now, the super has to be the first line in the constructor. So here we have a constructor for delivery order. That super to call the constructor has to be the first line of this method. The constructor of the superclass executes before the rest of the constructor of the subclass. That has to execute first. Now, if I didn't have this in here, since I did not specify what superclass constructor I wanted to call, it's going to call the no argument constructor on the superclass. And there is no no argument constructor on the superclass, therefore we would get an error. All right, let's look at the unit test and the pizza class. Pizza class, we didn't change anything. We don't charge a different amount for a pizza, whether it's on a pickup or a delivery order. We simply add a flat fee to the delivery orders. Let's look at the unit test. And the unit test should test a delivery order along with a regular order. So here we're testing a regular order. We're testing a small fit. Oh, um, here we're actually creating a pizza. My mistake, we're not creating an order yet. Here we're creating a regular order. How do I know that? Because it says order O equals new order. And we pass it to two arguments that that requires. We're going to add the two pizzas to it, and we're going to get the cost of the bake time is, or the cost of the order is, the bake time is. The delivery order, we're going to call the constructor in the subclass and pass it the, the uh, name and 
phone number. And it looks like I put this in the wrong order. The phone number should be after the name. So we call order D equals new delivery order. All right. We can do this, but we'll save that for a minute here. I'm going to say like we have been saying delivery order equals new delivery order. I can call add pizza, even though add pizza isn't in the delivery order class, that method is not in the delivery order class, but it is in the order class and the delivery order inherits from the order class. I can say calculate price and I can calculate bake time because this is a delivery order. When we call calculate price, we're going to get the calculate price that exists on the delivery order. Which is going to take the super classes calculate price and we're going to add 5 dollars to it. So, let's go and run this and see what we get. We compile it, no compile errors. There's a piece is created. The delivery order, the cost of the order is $26 instead of $21. I actually made both orders have the same pizzas on it in the test example, or actually copies of the pizza. All thick and large. But notice that the cost of the order is the cost of the sum of the cost of the pizzas plus an additional $5. And the bake time is still 16 minutes and the delivery time for the order is 30 minutes plus 16 minutes or 46 minutes. Are there any questions about this so far? Let's follow through the constructor because that's important. We call the, the constructor on delivery order and pass it those five arguments. First thing it's going to do is going to call the super classes constructor and give it those two arguments. We're going to let the super class handle those two because it has a constructor for those two. Finally, we're going to add, uh, then we're going to use this constructor to process the other arguments. The address city state zip.
Uh, the question was asked is the phone number only four characters and yes, it was. I just, I just, uh, in this example, I just put in my, uh. My extension, uh, cause, um, you know, it, it, it should be a full four number phone number. Yes, it's only it's only for example purposes. Um, later on, we're going to write validation to make sure that make sure certain things. Like we could make sure that if you uh, set the phone number, that the phone number is uh, exactly this phone number ten digits long. Because there's a three digit area code, the three digit exchange, and the four uh, digit number. So yeah, we could we could validate that. Just like we could validate for no name or, or no address, no city, state, or zip. All right. But uh, we're we're just we're following the rules this time. You know, we're making sure that we do everything okay and enter the data. That is needed. Now, the one thing I showed you that I said we'll study, we'll look at it later is this. Can I say this? Yes, I can. That might be a little surprising. Yes, I can. What we're saying is I'm going to create a new order of some kind that order happens to be a delivery order now will this give me a compile error it will but not where you might think it's not going to give us a line an error on this line it's going to give us an error on this line calculate delivery time Let's take a look at it, make sure that I'm right. And sure enough, it gave me an error where I said it would, line 66. Why did that give me that error? Take a second to think about it. Why does it give me that error? It gives me that error because the order, the variable D all we know about it is that it points to some kind of order. Because it points to some kind of order, doesn't necessarily point to a delivery order, doesn't necessarily point to a regular order. We just know it points to some kind of order. Right? Now, because of that, because D could point to any kind of order. We created it as a delivery order, but down the line, we could have changed it into a, a regular order by saying order D equals new order. Or say D equals O, something like that. Because we can't guarantee that this is a delivery order, all we know is that D is a regular order, which means that I can only call the methods that exist on the order class. So I'm going to comment that line of code out. Now it's going to compile cleanly. What happens when I run it though? Is it going to price the order correctly? Is it going to forget to add the, the delivery order charge? Actually, no. It still adds the delivery charge to this, and the second order is $26, which is the sum of the two pizzas plus the $5 delivery charge.
That is known as polymorphism. Polymorphism simply means many forms. What this is saying is when we call that function, calculate bake time, we will get that proper version of the function according to the kind of object that was created. So we have two things at work here. We have the variable that's gonna store the object and we have the actual object in the heap. All right. The variable that stores the object simply defines that we can only have an order object or something that inherits from the order op or order class uh, in that variable. Which we did. Here we in O, order O, we created a regular order. This time we create a delivery order. But that is okay because all we're saying is that we have some kind of order in this variable. We're not saying it's a delivery order. We're not saying it's not a delivery order. This is what determines the actual object is going to get created on the heap. This is simply the pointer to that object. So if I say order D equals new delivery order, I have a pointer out there called D that can hold a pointer to any kind of order there is. Maybe there's a, a, a catering order, for example, might be a third, uh, a third kind of order, right? That also inherits from order. All we're saying is that pointer can hold a pointer to any kind of order object that exists. Superclass or any of its subclasses. This determines the actual kind of object that will be created when we say new delivery order. Because that actually is the object that's created when we call calculate price, we get the delivery orders version of calculate price calculates the regular price for the order. Cutting grass here is spread a racket. Scared me a little bit. Um, we call the regular or, uh, order, the super classes calculate price and add $5 to it as a, uh, as a delivery charge. And that's the price of the order. However, this is an illegal statement. That's not the one I want. That's not an illegal statement. This is an illegal statement. Because if I say order D, all I know is that some kind of order can be in there, which means we cannot call a method that doesn't exist for class. But when we call a method, we're gonna get the method that was created in the delivery order class. I know that's a little confusing. That will come with time. All right. Now, can I do this? I say delivery order equals new order, right? Think in your mind if you think that this is going to be, whether this is going to be successful or not. Want to compile it? It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? This side of the equal sign says that the pointer, that the object that I create must be of this type. Delivery order. An order 
A plain old order is not a delivery order. Therefore, I can't point to a plain old order using a delivery order type pointer. Because an order is not a delivery order. A delivery order is an order. Therefore, I can say this. I can point to a delivery order with an order pointer because a delivery order is an order. All right. Let's say if I wanted the phone number of the person, if I wanted to output the phone number. Notice all I have to do is say, get phone. Get phone does not live in the delivery order method or in the delivery order object, but in the class, but it does live in the order. I can call it then because a delivery order is an order. I can also call it because get phone method exists in the order class. Therefore, this is allowable because the get phone method lives in the order class. So I can point to that method using a order pointer. And just to sort of prove that that's true, I'll go and compile. And it would have worked if I didn't have the extra parenthesis. Now, I alluded to this a few minutes ago. Let's take a look at what if I omit this statement? To comment out this statement. Let's see what happens. So I omitted the super function in the constructor. We get a rather cryptic error. I'm going to do my best to try to explain that cryptic error to you as simply as possible. What this is saying is no arguments were found in the constructor for order. And two strings are what is required on the order constructor. Well, let's look at the order class. And sure enough, if we look at the order constructor, it expects two strings. So it's telling me that you have to give two strings to create an order using the constructor. Why does it say no arguments? Well, when you create an instance of a subclass, some constructor on the superclass is going to run. You have to create the superclass in memory before you can create the subclass in memory. Therefore, when I create a member of the subclass, the con some constructor on the superclass is going to run first. I didn't specify what constructor I wanted to call, right? I commented this line out. So therefore there is no 
call to a constructor on the superclass. But it has to run some constructor. By default, it will try to run a constructor with no arguments. That's why it said found no arguments. We didn't specify what constructor of the superclass we wanted to call. Therefore, automatically, the superclass's no argument constructor gets called. And of course, because we defined a constructor on the superclass, the order class, we do not get by default a no constructor method. If we truly wanted that, we would have to create a constructor like this. If we do that, then now we don't get an error because we didn't specify what constructor to call here, calls the no argument constructor, and now we've explicitly coded the no argument constructor. When you code any constructor, the compiler does not generate the no argument constructor anymore. Now, I wouldn't recommend solving this by adding the no argument constructor. When I created the order class, I wanted to make sure that when you create an order, you supply it with a name and a phone number. Because it doesn't make sense to have an order without a name and a phone number. Therefore, what I would do is I would call the super class and give it the name and the phone number and let it do the processing of saving that. When you define constructors, you think about what it is you want are able to default and what things you want to be required. It doesn't make sense in the case of an order to think that we're going to default the name. You know, what's the default name for someone making a pizza order? I don't know. John? Mike? Doesn't make sense. There is no default for the name. What's the default phone number for someone making a pizza order? I don't know. Therefore, I'm making sure that the that when this object is created, that the constructor gets one of those things, gets the gets all of those things rather, the name and the phone number in the case of a regular delivery, uh, a regular order, in the case of the name, phone number, address, city, state, and zip, in the case of a delivery order. So when you see items in a constructor, that typically means, hey, we don't want to default those. We want to be able to set those via the constructor. Or let me rephrase that. Uh, when you see items in a constructor, it means that we can possibly set those uh, when we call the constructor. All right, are there any questions about any of this? Uh, I do have posted out on Canvas, let me double check. I lied, I don't. I have this example out there at the lecture. But if you want supplementary material, you can find a lot of examples of inheritance by simply Googling for inheritance in Java. And it will give you some rationale for doing that and so on. In this example, they have bicycle as the base class and derived class. In our terminology, it's the superclass and the subclass. Now, 
mountain bike is a bicycle. Therefore, mountain bike can extend the bicycle class. I do have posted in here a quiz. Take a look through it. And it's not for a grade, it's uh, just for your own uh, usage to go in here and see and ask the question. And they have the answers to the question right here. I didn't really touch on this, but this other resource does. We use inheritance to make the code reusable. When I created a delivery class, I did not have to go and create all the methods for calculating the price of the pizza and adding a pizza to the order and all that, because that was already defined in the order class. An is a relationship. Superclass and subclass. How do you uh, do inheritance achieved in Java? We covered extends. We'll talk about implemented next week. Shows the syntax. This is something we didn't talk about. Every class in Java is a uh, subclass of the object class. And so on. Some of the things we did not get into, we'll, we'll touch on later on, uh, but it's there for your reading. Are there any questions? Okay, um, take some time, study it, look at what your assignment is. Remember when you code it, you have to create a graduate student class. That's like a student, a graduate student is a student, but they have a different way of calculating their tuition charge. All right, think of what the differences are. And remember, in the subclass, you only have to code the constructors and what is different between a be different between the superclass and the subclass. All right, uh, we will see you next week then. Take care.